in this video, we're gonna look at Python object oriented programming. We will explain what is a function, what is a method, what is an attribute, what is a class and object in uh, Python. So I have all the code here. So I'm gonna create a new cell on top using A. So to add a new cell, I just click on the left here and click A. So the first thing I need to do is I need to um, import some models for this tutorial. I'm gonna need NumPy. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import NumPy. Enter. And one more module I need to use, which is math. I'm gonna import it now. Okay, so now I got NumPy and math imported. In order to demonstrate and explain how to use and what it is, a function, a method, an attribute, a class, and an object, we're gonna create a uh, list and a numpy array. So here we got uh, create a numpy array objects. Firstly, we're gonna create a list, put a list here, and from that list, we can create a number array by just putting the list inside two curly brackets like this. So I'm, I can test this now. This is a list and this is a numpy array. We need to create a second list, which is list two here, and second numpy array based on that list two. So now I got two lists, which is list one and list two, and two numpy arrays, which is np array object one and np array object two. So next is what is the function? In Python, we got two types of functions, which is built-in function, that the function that provided by Python or a package or a model. So the first thing is built-in function. We got second type, which is the user-defined function. Sometimes we need to create our own function for our own purpose. That kind of function called user-defined function. Because we already imported NumPy here, so we can use NumPy now. So inside NumPy, we have many, many functions. So if we type in np and dot, and we press tab, Jupyter Notebook will list for us the functions and method that's available inside NumPy. So it has so many functions in NumPy here. Because we have two lists and two NumPy arrays which contain numbers. So we're gonna play with a mean function. So we can determine the mean of the first list. And we got that. And the mean of the NumPy array. Because the NumPy array is generated based on the list. So when we run this, the mean of NumPy array 1 should be the same as the mean of the list 1. And we can see that which is 8.83. We can test the maximum function for the list 2 and we got 25. If we check this here, we can see that 25 is the maximum of this list and that function, maximum function, can also apply to a numpy array as well. So that is built-in function. So again, if you want to see what kind of function is available inside numpy, I think you can also use the and you put np or NumPy inside the curly brackets and you got the list of all the methods and functions here. It's a very very long list. The whole NumPy model. Next we're gonna look at user defined function. To make it easier for me to explain I'm gonna create a new shelf here. So now we're gonna look at user define function. We can create a new function using this way. We need the keyword def and then we put in the function name which is new mean for example and inside the curly brackets here we put in the, the input parameter. So now we wanna create a new function that calculate mean we got we already have the building function can calculate the mean of a list or a numpy array but now we want to test this we want to create our own mean function so we call it new mean and uh, the input parameter for this function is going to be uh, an object that can uh, loop through the element so we're going to call it loop object then after the close curly bracket we need a colon and then press enter 
We see that after we press enter, Python is gonna be automatically indented for us. It's like a tap here. It's not starting from the beginning of the line, but it's make one tap for us. So we're gonna define a variable called sum is equal zero to hold the result. And what in order to determine the, the mean of a list or a number array, we will need to loop to all the element inside that list. Then we will need to add sum all the values of those elements and finally we're gonna divide it the sum by the number of elements in the list so we need the sum and we need the number of element the number of element can determine by the length function we call length and put in the object that we want to look to now we can use a for loop to look to all the elements inside a list or a numpy array we have four i in loop object and uh, we can add i into the sum so we can use like this sum is equal sum plus i or actually we can use sum uh, plus is equal to i we can do that programmer normally uses but uh, i want to use this for it's easier to understand when we finish this list, this loop is gonna calculate the sum for us the sum of all the elements inside this object so the result is gonna be the sum divided by number of elements and then we use the return keyword to return the value for the new function that we created so now we can test the function you can see that the new function runs successfully and it's return 8.8 .8. so we can check using the mean method and we see that numpy mean method provide 8.8 .8, and our new user user defined function also calculated 8.8 .8. so that is user defined function so now we already done for what is the function we explain what is a built-in function what is an user defined function next we're gonna look at uh, what is the method i'm gonna create a new shell what is the method so a method is actually a built-in function of an object and that function is defined by its associated class. The definition is this sounds very um, difficult to understand but uh, with the following examples it's gonna be make sense and it will be very easy when we run to the example. So we're gonna put the definition here. This is uh, just definition that I think up and comes up with. Uh, you can look online for official definition of a method. But that's that the way that we understand that and uh, we're gonna explain why a method is a built-in function of an object. So here we got some example. Come back to here. Uh, remind us that we already have a numpy array here and uh, the second numpy array. So um, we're gonna call the value of the numpy array. So we the way up. I'm gonna print it the value out. We got list one and list two. We got numpy array one and numpy array two. So here all the value, the data we already have. Uh, another function that we can use to list all the variables and values of them is using the whose function. So we can see that here we got uh, list one, list two. We got uh, numpy array one and numpy array two. However, it's all only list the types of the variables, the name of it and the information inside. It's not detailed. If we want to get the value detailed like this, we need to call the variable and run it again. I'm gonna delete that to make some space. With this numpy object, if I use a type function to track it, I can see that which is a numpy array. And which a numpy array, we know that it has method and attribute. So what is a method and what is an attribute? What is a method? and it's a difference from an attribute so i'm gonna call the maximum method i'm gonna call mx and max and to call the maximum method i need to put in the curly brackets after i call the method name and i run it so if you see something like this the method name and a uh, pair of curly bracket at the end of the method or end of the function name it is a method so we have a max method we can also have mean method have mean method but what if we call max method and mean method for list one and list two like this we call list one and call max method 
what will happen. Actually, I already know it here. So if we run this, we're gonna get an error. So this error is been that it's an attribute error. Why? Because a list doesn't have the mean method or the max the max method. So it's gonna throw out an error. If we want to see what is available, what methods are available, what attributes are available for a list, we can get the list and we press dot and then tap. So we can this is the method for a list. Like here, we can use the method append, append to append a new element to at the end of the list. We can count the number of one element appear in the list. We can do insert, we can remove, we can reverse the list. So that is the method. So again, if you see something with a curly bracket at the end, like this, this is a method. Next, what is an attribute? An attribute is, is, a, is a value which is assigned to an object by its class, or it's defined by its class, and it's assigned when we generate or when we create the object. For example, when we create this, NumPy array object. We assign values to that object. So when when we assign that, we will define that object. This automatically have a certain method inside it and certain attributes inside it. So let's see what kind of attribute we got from uh, NumPy NumPy array object here. Again, we gonna call a numpy array then dot then press tap and we can see here we look for that and we can see here we got a shape and if we press shape and we type in the curly practice at the end of shape and we run it we're gonna get an error why because it's not a method it is an attribute of this numpy object so to call that attribute we need to just call the name of the attribute attribute name without anything at the end of attribute name like that and we run it again and we've got the shape of the numpy array is one dimensional numpy array with six elements in this so we can uh, put in the help here and sorry help and put in the numpy array so we can see inside here we have a uh, attribute we have a uh, method yeah so that in inside that we got uh, the shape attribute we got the uh, detail of shape etc we got data detail we got um this which is the number of elements inside the array we can call that to test that which is the shape and we can also call the size and after we run the size we will make it uh, one more shell up there. So the shape and the size is the same because it is um, no, it's not the same. So this is the shape and it's the shape. The shape is telling us uh, how many rows, how many rows is in the numpy array, how many columns is in the numpy array. But the size will tell us how many elements inside that numpy array. So that is an attribute. So again, to differentiate between an attribute and a method it's very simple a method have curly brackets at the end of it and it can have several input parameters when we run it so a uh, a method is actually a function but an attribute is just a value assigned to that object with a name inside that object so when we want to get the value of that we call the attribute name for example uh, the shape of an empire array the size of an empire array Next part of this video, we're gonna look at uh, what is an object and what is a class. So to demonstrate what is an object and what is a class, we're gonna create a new object. So here we're gonna create a new object with the uh, attribute and method inside it. Uh, we we will to get a class first, and then based on that class, we will create new objects based on that class. So uh, now we're gonna create a new class called class point called a point. So in surveying a point, it's very important. Uh, a point need to have uh, two value, which is x and y coordinate, and it can be contain also z coordinates or elevation or depth as well. And a point point can have an attribute called description so some uh, describing information about the point it can also contain survey by the person who did the survey who draw it the survey date the survey site which is the survey location
description and it can contain more information like client as well so in order to create a new class we need to use the keyword class in Python so we just call class and then we call the name of the class so um, normally in Python people use the name of class with uh, the first uh, the first character is uh, capitalized and for function it's a uh, it's normal it's a uh, it's not uppercase, it's lowercase. But for class name, people use uh, uppercase. And then we choose colon at the end of the class name. And we press enter. And inside class name here, we need to use the first function, which is init. So uh, this function is uh, initiation function. So when we create an object, this function will run. And it will generate information and assign to attributes, a lot of attributes for us. So inside here, we can define the function called init so this the name of this function need to be accurate it's the, actually a keyword so when you type in it's, it looks like this that means it's a keyword and then inside here the first parameter you need to put in which is cell then we're gonna put in the uh, parameter that we want for uh, the class because this is a point so we need to define to give it to give the information of uh, x coordinate, y coordinate, z coordinate, and uh, description, etc. So I already created here. So I just copy it up there. And at the end of that line, we need a colon. Then we press enter. Inside here, we just do shelf dot x is equal x. It's not necessary to be x. It can be. Uh, ice like that but we'd like to use it it's just more consistent and the same we got shelf dot y is equal y and shell dot z is equal z and the same i just copy here to say term look like that so you go from x y z description survey by drawn by survey date survey sign and the client that's the first first class uh, the first uh, function and then now we can uh, run it as an example we run it now we can call that point so we can make it a type it's not very clear but we see that you see this is an object in the main core point now we can uh, generate a new point new point object based on this new class so we're gonna call it uh, point one is equal point and we just put in something like that and we're gonna copy because I have that example down there I just copy it up there to say time so here I define a new object. That object using this new class we just created and we put in the shell is you see here in the function we call shell. But when we define the object, we ignore the shell and we start inputting the parameter from x from the second parameter after the shell. So here we got uh the x coordinate is 10, a uh, y coordinate is 5, and z is 4 for example. And uh, description is uh for example operator. Uh, house surveyed by for example Obama uh, drawn by for example Leo and the survey date is uh, for example today survey site probably in Sydney for example and the client uh, I put in is Facebook is the client for the survey just an example run that now we've got a new point which is an object so when we have the new point here, we can uh, get the attribute inside the point. So when we do like this, it's actually we define the attribute information for the class or the object that we generated. So we can call that information. Uh, we can call point one x and point one y. So now we have the coordinate of it. So we can print out like that. Uh, we can print out the coordinates of the point name and we got the point description uh, so we got uh, here we put in new line for x is similar what new line for y is and z is so inside here we can put in the point one dot x similar here we can copy from point one dot y and here is point one dot z and we can press enter so now we got the coordinate of the point name over a house uh, that's for the first point uh, we can generate a second point we call point two and here in the in uh, when we print now we we call point two out and now we can uh, change the coordinate system of the point two for example um, uh, point two for example x is five and uh, 
y is 2 and the elevation is 2 then the description is not opera house, opera house. maybe um, maybe uh, Victoria T and the surveyor maybe uh, uh, Bill Clinton I'll just call it uh, Bill Gates is that the name of Bill Gates or just Bill and I change call uh, Ronaldo is that correct oh yeah sorry it's be Ronaldo and the day is uh, the same day the location maybe in Perth and the client now is uh, YouTube for example you see that I can get out the attribute of the, the object that I just created and print out and put in my calculation so that is uh, how to generate attributes for class and then how to use this as an object next uh, we come back to our class here we need to make a method for the class so to make a method for the class we're gonna use this define function so as I mentioned before, a method of an object is actually a built-in function which defined by the class associated with that object. So here we want to define a new function inside this class. So after we define this function, it's going to be a method for the, an object which is generated based on this class. So uh, because this is a point, so we can uh, calculate the distance from a point to another point. Or yeah, we can, can, can calculate the distance from the current point to another point. So here we call the function called distance from point. Then we put inside the cell as always have the self uh, input parameter here and the next argument we need to have which is uh, the point that we calculate the distance for the x coordinate of that point and the y coordinate of that point and uh, to calculate the distance from a point to another point we need to calculate the offsets in two directions which is uh, in x division and y division then when we can use the uh, uh, square root function from math model and we calculate the square of the first offset and the square of the second offset we sum two of them together then we take the square root of them and we return that value so now we run it and we got the new class with uh, different attributes and one method called distance from point now we're gonna try to use that method so here we generate the point one again we run it and point two we run it so now we got point one and point two and we got the distance from point here so now we're gonna try to calculate the distance from point one to point two so in order to demonstrate how the distance from point one to point two is measure I got a uh, cat drawing here so here is point one uh, I'm gonna put a text here which is uh, point one and I can uh, get a second text here which is point two so we've got point one here and point two here the coordinates uh, point one is 10 and uh, 5 and the coordinate of point two is uh, 5 and 2 so the so distance between point one and point two can be easily calculated by AutoCAD using the dimension function dimension command and I got the uh, 5.8 meter between two points so let's see how we calculate it in here so we note that uh, the distance calculated by AutoCAD is uh, 5.8 meter roughly 5.8 meter so distance calculated by uh, distance from point method how to calculate that so we got the objective point one here we call the method so when we have point one and we press dot and then we press tap we see that all the attributes and the method we define for the class when we define the class up here is listed here for us so we can just click on that and choose that and we when we do this we can press double tap but it's actually not very correct so um i think we can we can even get help for this one not working it's a built-in okay so actually it's uh, if, if you don't know how to use the form of the method you can get help for the method like this so we tell us that distance from point and we need two parameter put in here so now we want to calculate the distance from point one to point two uh, we need to put in x coordinate of point two here how to get the x coordinate of point two we just use the x attribute of point two so we just call x 
and point to and we just go y yeah and we run that and you see that it is uh, 5.83 which is exactly that we calculate in AutoCAD here if we check it in AutoCAD uh, we can change the accuracy of the dimension here we can choose the unit to be for example 3 it looks a bit messy but that's alright so you can see that it is actually uh, 5.831 5 meter and we come back here which is exactly that one we can round it up to 3 meter like that and now uh, we got exactly what is calculated in AutoCAD here so that's the first method the second method that we can calculate the distance from point 1 to point 2 is we use the function uh, that we use that distance from point method but from point 2 then we put point 1 in here and then we run it, it and we got the same result so how about if we want to calculate the distance from point 1 to uh, the origin of the coordinate system uh, I mean this this uh, this distance and here in AutoCAD we measure it the distance is 11.180 so calculate distance from point 1 to origin which is 0 by 0 and in AutoCAD we got 11.180 CAD result which is uh, 11.810 so we use the same method here but inside here we put in 0 and 0 and we run it and we got exactly the same value which is represented here in AutoCAD so uh, that's it is uh, how to create a new class and based on class how to create a new object multiple objects from one class and how to use methods and attributes I hope that uh, this video is helpful for uh, a surveyor or GA practitioner that uh, doesn't have programming background, understand more and can differentiate what is the difference between a function, a method, an attribute, what is a class and object in Python or in object-oriented programming in Python.